So while Nvidia's latest consumer graphics card may be labeled the same as the direct competitor for the RX 480, the GTX 1060 3GB performance is definitely not up to the same standard. Rather, it's a card that's more readily comparable to the RX 470, both in terms of frame rates and pricing, of which is the subject of today's video. Although if you would like me to do a video highlighting the main difference between the GTX 1060 6GB and 3GB editions, let me know down in the comments. So with both the Zotac 1063GB and PowerColor RX 474GB in hand from Wootware, let's examine which one is more worthy of your purchase. So the obvious first metric to compare both cards on is their gaming performance. However, there's no clear-cut victor in this regard. Comparing the synthetic benchmarks from 3D marks such as in Fire Strike and in the DirectX 12 Time Spy run, the main indication is that both cards are fairly similar in overall power. In reality though, it's completely on a game-by-game, API-by-API basis. Out of my entire testing suite at 1080p, the GTX 1060 3GB comes first in Ashes of the Singularity DirectX 11, Doom on OpenGL, Grand Theft Auto 5, Metro Last Light, Middle Earth Shadow of Mortar, Rise of the Tomb Raider DirectX 11, and The Witcher 3. On the flip side, the RX 470 takes the title in Ashes of the Singularity DirectX 12, Deus Ex DirectX 11 and 12, Doom on Vulcan, Hitman in both DX 11 and 12, and Rise of the Tomb Raider DX 12. Those results, however, are even less contested once you up the resolutions and require more VRAM out of the cards. The 3 gigabytes on the 1060 is a definite hindrance. Even at 1080p, many modern games are able to use nearly 4 gigabytes at that resolution set. In 1440p, the 1060 keeps its lead only in Ashes of the Singularity in DX11, GTA 5, Metro Last Light, and Tomb Raider DX11, with the RX 470 sweeping the rest. 4K gaming, while impractical with these cards, is even more condemning on the 1060's lower VRAM amount. So without an overall indication of which card is uncontestedly better, I'm going to give the RX 470 0.75 points here instead of a full 1 point, since the 1063GB does pull its weight in some games at 1080p. However, if you're gaming at higher resolutions, or as more titles come out that have similar or greater graphical intensity as my gaming set, the RX 470 will likely be the better choice. Also, once the transition happens that DX12 is the standard, and publishers aren't releasing games in both 11 and 12 to be tested in, again, the 470 will likely have the apparent upper hand. In terms of power consumption, the RX 470 and GTX 1063 gig share the same TDP of 120 watts, so they both get a point here, and will likely both cost the same amount for electricity. Cooling performance is also then going to mainly come down to the various cooling solutions implemented by the manufacturers and will be on a card by card basis. Now let's move on to an intangible that's a bit harder to quantify. In terms of monitor technology, the RX 470 supports FreeSync as well as outputs of HDMI 2.0b and DisplayPort 1.4. The GTX 1060 has G-Sync monitors, but the same set of compatible outputs for up to 8K 60Hz 10-bit HDR panels on DisplayPort 1.4. The comparison isn't as simple here, as FreeSync monitors tend to be cheaper, but then G-Sync has a wider range of supported refresh rates on the panel itself. If you just have a standard monitor, then this comparison doesn't matter at all. And if you already have a FreeSync or G-Sync panel, then your choice is likely already made for you. However, based on logic, if you're going for these roughly $200 cards, that tells me that you're working on a tighter budget, of which category FreeSync monitors more readily fall into. And for that simple fact, I'll give the RX 470 0.25 points. Another difficult intangible that likely will vary from card to card that you pick up is overclocking potential. So instead of taking what I was personally able to achieve on each card, since that's entirely anecdotal and dependent on the silicon lottery, let's head over to the HWBot website to see what the average overclock people are getting with each card on air cooling. Taking the percentage gain from the boost clock of the cards rather than the base, the 1063GB appears to have a 20% headroom or overclocking while the RX 470 only has 6.7% headroom. Going from the base clock makes it a 37% gain for the 1063 gig and a freaking 46% gain for the RX 470. I think the base clock comparison is a bit disingenuous because with a good cooler, most cards will be attaining something closer to the boost clock. My PowerColor RX 470 never dropped below the boost clock during gaming, and the Zotac 1063 gig 
always kept above the boost thanks to GPU Boost 3.0. Taking the percentage gains from the boost clock then, the GTX 1060 clearly wins here. However, I'm only going to give 0.5 points here since GPU Boost 3.0 already makes up for some of that overclocking delta with regards to the performance gains that the GTX 1060 can attain. I understand that these might likely be the most controversial points that are awarded simply due to the unguaranteed results of what overclock you'll be able to achieve and how far you'll be able to get the cards to a game stable overclock rather than just a sheer frequency clock. These variabilities are the reason that I want to award less than one point to the 1063 gig here since it's not entirely cut and dry. The last intangible is added features of the new GPU architecture. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot that Polaris added in terms of feature set that Pascal did not. Of course, that is taking the performance advantages of Polaris's async compute out of the equation since that's clearly represented in the frame rate comparison. However, Pascal brings to the table for the GTX 1060 some added feature sets such as Ansel for taking in-game super high resolution screenshots and simultaneous multi-projection, which will adjust in-game viewing angles to be adjusted to your real world screens angles, which is super helpful for multi-monitor setups and VR. For this, I award the GTX 1060 3 gig another half of a point simply due to one, multi-monitor gaming on the 1063 gig won't be a high likelihood unless you drop the detail settings quite a bit, and two, the Ansel is a nice feature, but not something that I would ever make a purchasing decision based on since I likely won't utilize it too often and that it's not supported by a wide variety of games. However, it should still definitely be given as a bonus for the 1063 gig. Pricing also seems to give the RX 470 a slight advantage, at least in the US, with the cheapest 470s coming in at $10 less than the 1063 gigabytes. In South Africa, it's less obvious with them coming in at the exact same price of 3,699 Rand on Wootware's website. It's not a clean sweep either way, but I'll give the 470 another 0.25 points here, which of course can change based on sales and pricing restructures by various companies. So rounding out the comparison. The GTX 1063 GB edition finishes with two full points. The RX 470 lands at the conclusion point with 2.25 points, making it the apparent winner of the shootout. All of this comes down to me recommending the RX 470 over the GTX 1063 GB card at this point at their price setups. The 3 GB of VRAM seem to be a significant hindrance to the GTX 1060 in many gaming environments. And even without that hindrance, AMD has clearly positioned the RX 470 to succeed with newer APIs, with the 1060 not taking any victories in DirectX 12 or Vulkan. It's not always an obvious conclusion between the two, however. If you mainly play game workspace titles and have a G-Sync monitor, the RX 470 would be a, a step back for you. But for people who play a wider variety of games and keep up with the latest titles, the RX 470 is the more future-proof card, which is a term I personally hate. There's also the slight added advantage that you could put the RX 470 in crossfire with another card if you need a performance bump down the road, which is a choice that is no longer available on a 1060 card. I wouldn't recommend this route as you won't experience direct scaling in all games, which is why I left it out of the points calculations, but it's something to be considered as well and could be given as a bonus advantage. The main thing that I would posit as the conclusion for this video is that it doesn't appear like the RX 470 has many, if any, downsides at this point. It's a perfect card for 1080p gaming, has an extra gigabyte of VRAM or 5 gigabytes depending on the model, it's better set up for future API developments, and has the same TDP as the Nvidia equivalent, which is something that goes against modern stereotypes of AMD cards. The GTX 1063GB, on the other hand, has several limitations that make it a good card for now. That loss of 1GB of VRAM shows up as an issue in several games such as Ashes of the Singularity, Hitman, and Rise of the Tomb Raider, even at 1080p. The 1063 gig really only has an advantage now in some games because publishers are still holding out and developing for both DX11 and 12 or OpenGL and Vulkan. As soon as the transition takes place more fully, NVIDIA's lower end card might fall off really hard. So that's my conclusion. If you're debating between getting these two cards, I'd recommend getting the RX 470. 
If I missed anything that you feel like I should have considered in this comparison, or if you feel as if I weighted certain parts of the shootout incorrectly, be sure to sound off down in the comments. I'd love to discuss this more in detail with you guys down there. Civil discussion, of course. And with that conclusion, I'd like to give a huge thank you to WooWare for providing both of the graphics cards featured in this video, both of which you can expect a full review coming out on soon. If you're in South Africa, WooWare should be your go-to spot for computer components. Their tremendous pricing is amazing and they had the lowest price on both the RX 470 and GTX 1063 gig from what I could find, and their customer support team does their best to make shopping at WooWare an unforgettable experience. Also, their signature pink anti-static bubble wrap is a great addition for any decor upgrades that you're trying to make for your gaming lounge. So if you're in South Africa, head on over to wootware.co.za to woot up your PC. The link is in the video description. And that wraps it up for this video of the RX 470 versus the GTX 1063 GB GPU. Like this video, if you found it helpful at all, dislike it if you disagree with me or my conclusions, fair enough. Let me know if you want me to do a similar video comparing the full GTX 1063 gig to the RX 480. It probably is a bit late now, but I'm curious to see if there's any interest amongst you guys. You can subscribe to stay up to date on all of my tech-related content, and I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers.